everybody. Today I'd love to talk about breakfast because I really consider it, um, if you can get your breakfast really healthy, you know, then it sets you up for the day because uh, I don't know about you, but with me, if I don't get that first part of my day really healthy, you know, the world and life is just a distraction that comes in and pulls us here and there and everywhere. But if we get that breakfast, like if you can get up, I take my ion first, you know, because I have it right next to my bed. That sets up your gut lining, keeps it healthy, so you absorb all these wonderful foods better and you can keep toxins out. Uh, then I have, personally, I do uh, a lemon water, which is in, this is a 16 ounce glass of water, uh, not of water, it's my green smoothie, but that's a 16 ounce container. What I'll do is I'll fill that with water uh, cut the lemon in half, then squeeze, just use half the lemon, squeeze it into the water, I drink that first, then I wait, you know, 15 minutes to half an hour, then uh, right now, then I have my green smoothie. I've also done for years where I'd uh, have my celery juice first, and then I'd wait another 15, half an hour, at least 15 minutes between, then I'd have my green smoothie. Green smoothies has always been, by the way, the lemon sets your liver up for the day, cleanses your liver very nicely. Um, green smoothies have been part with brie. Green smoothies are what got her out of constipation. Green smoothies within the first six months because she had trouble uh, gaining weight, she gained 10 pounds, which was miraculous. Most people wouldn't be gaining weight, but it absorbed, it was like it was absorbing well. It's like if I had have known about the ion that would have changed everything up so much more, so much better. But it is what it is. So if you want to go that way, like the uh, green smoothies, uh, oh, uh, there's a woman that has written a really good little book, tiny little book, just recipes of green smoothies. I'll put it in the directions. And um, what I, the only thing I would see is that, because green smoothies are a great way to get a lot of vegetables and fruit into you. You know, it's, and the fiber's there too. So that's what's so nice about it. Um, I don't ever put like an almond milk or an oat milk like this or a coconut milk. I never put those in my green smoothies. Uh, if you're just transitioning, I'd rather, eat, I'd rather you eat some level of healthy food than not at all. So, you know, some of the recipes in that book have like coconut milk or they have like um, uh, cocoa powder. That's the sort of thing I usually wouldn't put in my green smoothies, but the rest are really good. It's, it's fruit and vegetables. I do put though the ground up flaxseed. And remember, you have to grind up flaxseed for it to absorb into your body. And I keep my seeds um, in the fridge. I'll grind up so many, like for the week, and then I keep them in my fridge. You wanna keep your nuts in the fridge and your seeds in the fridge so they don't go rancid, okay? And even when I shop, I like to shop at a store that keeps those things in some type of uh, refrigeration because you know they haven't been sitting there going rancid. Just a tip. I know stores that don't do that, so. So, um, so if you go the green smoothie route and the, the celery juice and the uh, lemon juice, for me, that keeps me going until lunch. Uh, you could also add um, an apple mid-morning. If you're going the really, really clean route, uh, you can just uh, slice this up and uh, eat the slices. You could also, um, another thing that I'm thinking, I'm try trying, you know, alkaline is fruits and vegetables, so you want to get as many in a day as possible. I generally get, like 10 would be a slow day. I usually get 15 to 20 of fruits and vegetables in my day easily. So another option, if you're, uh, you're you, you don't want to go, like you're just transitioning, you want something familiar, uh, you can do things like, this is a great vegan gluten-free uh, bread, Odo's. Um, also, so check your gluten-free breads because a lot of them still have eggs in them. Got to read the ingredients. 
So this one doesn't, it's vegan and it's gluten-free. It's really nice slices. Another option for breakfast is like um, avocado toast. So you would just, you know, toast your bread and you would uh, take the pulp out, mash it up with a fork. You can, it, you can just put it on the toast that way. If you want to add a little tidge of lemon juice and uh, maybe a little bit of cilantro uh, chopped up and mix it in with that and then put it on your toast, really nice. Okay, so that's what some people do. And also what they like to do with the toast, make sure it's gluten-free and, and vegan, is either do a hummus toast. Now, this is a really nice black garlic hummus. Your hummus, you want to make sure it's organic, okay? The reason is that chickpeas, which is what hummus is made from, are uh, mostly GMO. They're GMO. If they're not organic, they're genetically modified. You don't want that, okay? So this is really nice avocado or hummus toast. I make my own sprouts. I've done a sprout video. I do it all year round. Uh, beautiful, these are mine. And uh, I make different ones. I always have some going. You know, you can farm in your kitchen. I mean, I'm not in a position to do my own garden, but I can farm this way. So I would put those on top of either the avocado or the hummus. And that makes a really nice breakfast. I'll have my green tea and you can have that. So just another option for you. Now, if you go for another option, oops, is something like if you're a yogurt person, you don't want the dairy. So you would have like a cashew yogurt and you could put that in a bowl, the cashew yogurt, non-dairy, and you put it in a bowl. You can put something like um, a really nice, clean, um, natural cereal. Elizabeth's is nice. They're a little pricey. I got these half, half price, they were on sale. Uh, but you could sprinkle that on top of your yogurt. Depending on your trend, if you're transitioning to healthier, uh, you might want like a little bit of maple syrup in it. You could cut up pears, could put bananas, you could put diced up apple, berries, blueberries. This is what you can do if you're, you know, your tradition is like maybe a yogurt. So do a yogurt, use this, use this on top like a garnish because yeah, it's a little pricier, but if you're using it that way, it goes a long way. If you need to go the cereal, a milk route, you have your alternative uh, plant-based milks to go. You could use maple syrup as your sweetener, and you can use, look for, they've got a lot of different cereals out there. Uh, look for one that's organic, gluten-free, vegan. Okay, you have to read. This one uh, only has the quinoa, amaranth, and um, chia seeds. So it's not all organic, but those are organic in it just to give you some options of transition and maybe you're going for the healing healing level but maybe your kids want to go this way or your husband wants to go this or your your wife wants to go this way so you know i'll tell you that when i changed breeze in my diet it was like overnight i had no idea what i was doing i was reading books i was trying to figure it out um her dad did not want to go okay he was a meat and potatoes person and so, but he, you know, I told him, cook, cook your food. I'm living with some friends and they're cooking their food, which is something to do with animal. And I'm cooking mine, which is grain. It can be done. I don't talk about their food. They don't talk about my food. You know, it's not my business. My business is mine. You know, uh, you, you will change people by example more than anything else. So just so you know, you know, you don't. And three years later, my ex-husband asked me because I started making um, vegan desserts and he loved that. And so he was getting more and more used to it. And he would have like, uh, I'd get, I could do oatmeal for him at breakfast. So finally he just decided he wanted to eat with us. And uh, within four months, his cholesterol went down 50 points. Uh, and he loved it. He felt better than he had felt in a long time. Unfortunately, that's not the case for him today. But anyway, he, he got the experience. Um, so you can go like cereals like that with plant-based milks or yogurt. You can go with avocado toast or hummus toast, put it on your toast. 
with sprouts, very nice. Uh, you can do uh, gluten-free uh, rolled oats. Make sure you get the gluten-free rolled oats. You could do a porridge, and I'll put a recipe in for that. And then we also have some other grains that you probably haven't used much. Right here, I have uh, teff, and I have amaranth, and they're really like seeds. You can't wash them because they're, uh, they're finely cleaned through these screenings many times, so they're fine. Um, this one here, and I've got it ready in a loaf to slice later, like I love to do. Um, this is uh, millet, which is very alkalining, and it's the amaranth, and also a winter squash, uh, onion and celery in this. So uh, amaranth, amaranth is freaking awesome. And you know, if people are going no grains, no grains, which I disagree with, but these are seeds. So is quinoa, by the way. So um, amaranth, where it's growing, like in Africa and South America, uh, there are no malnourished children where there's amaranth. Amaranth is, if there's a lack of food or drought, that's what you want, okay? So that's, this is amaranth. Now you could take this, you could eat it just like that, like I have here in the bowl, or you could, uh, depending on yourself or who you're dealing with, a little bit of maple syrup on top, or uh, some, uh, some uh, plant-based milk too. Now, um, and I'll tell you at the end. Now this one here is another cooked uh, breakfast cereal. And this is teff and amaranth, these two together. Teff, these are both high in calcium, high in protein, very, very high. And this combination here, half and half, I've got turnip in it, I've got sweet potato, onion, and at the very end, I put in some Napa cabbage. So four vegetables just in there, three in the other one. That's the way I build up the vegetables is I combine them with the grains and stuff. So if I were doing this for brie traditionally, I would have done one of these, no maple syrup or anything, one of these cereals. Then I would have taken a leafy green, like collards, these are beautiful collards. Love collards, one of my favorite. So uh, you wash them and then you steam them for like three minutes, that's it, no longer. But what I do with the collards to cut them is I literally, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna roll them up like a cigar. And what you might wanna do is take off these stems. You see the stems? You, you might wanna take those off first. I just do a V up on, the, up on the stem and I got that out. Then what I'll do is I'll just slice through it like this, like a matchstick and I'll put those in like a minute before uh, and steaming, just like quickly. But then I will uh, cut these off. I will roll the leaves up just like a cigar, just like that. And then I will down, slice really thin through them, get these real thin, because it's gonna cook fast. I love it, I love it. So what I would have done with Brie is I would have had uh, some cereal and I had to blend her everything up for her. Then I would have had greens like this on the side. So that would have been five vegetables for her breakfast. Then she would have had her green smoothie mid-morning. So now you see how I'm building up to get very alkalining for her. The other thing I wanted, to, oh, this is what Napa cabbage looks like. They can come back big. This is, and they're, they're huge. When you use it, you don't just use the top or something. You take a whole leaf off. You take the whole leaf off and you slice that. You don't just use this part one time and then more, unless you're gonna use the whole head. But if you're just gonna use part of it like I did today, you take the whole leaf off it. You wanna keep the nice balance of energy in the food. The other thing, uh, winter squash, remember we sliced down the middle and then you can scoop out the seeds, throw them out, and then you put it face down like this on your cutting board and you slice away from you, away from you. I'll take off the bottom and slice away from you because you want to be safe, you don't want to. And then I uh, dice that up and I put it in the pot. 
So breakfast, you know, a really, really important part of the day. Uh, and I'm just, you know, I'm trying to give you the variety from going to real healing. And you know what? Mix it up. Like, um, you know, don't, not, don't have the same breakfast every day, every day, every day. You know, one day do an avocado toast, like say the weekend, do an avocado toast or hummus toast with sprouts on it. You know, do that and have your green tea. Or, um, and then there's nut butters too. You can do nut butters with sprouts on them. You have your, you know, your cashew butter or your almond butters. You can do that too. I'm just trying to give you some healthy alternatives. Um, so, but, the ideal, I mean, the real healing are the grains, uh, some greens, maybe a little miso soup, green smoothies. That's the high level. This is for like, you know, uh, more challenging people in your family. Now, this is what I would have come in with, with my ex-husband probably. So, you know, it's probably if you want to maintain uh, and by the way, green smoothies last for three days in the fridge, so you can do that ahead of time. And any of these cereals, you know, you do them. This one, I'll, tomorrow morning, what I'll do this one here is I'll slice it and I'll saute it just a bit in um, toasted sesame oil and just brown it lightly on both sides. And then I'll have some steamed leafy greens with it. And that's a beautiful breakfast. That's a beautiful healing breakfast. So. You know, there are good options. If you can get up an hour earlier and go to bed an hour earlier, or earlier both ways, uh, your best sleep is between 10 and 2 in the morning, just so you know. And um, if you could get up and get your meditation, your if tapping, like right now I'm doing tapping, your, uh, your um, four minute exercise, and if you could energy exercise, if you could get those done in the morning, anything like that, uh, have your eye on, have a good breakfast. You know, if you're having a cereal like that, take a green smoothie for, for lunch or something. That first part of the day is your setting you up for a really, really good day because you don't know if you work late or friends ask you to go out for supper or whatever happens. If you set the morning up, no matter how chaotic the rest of the day, you've had a really, really good morning, you know, and that's your, like, the foundation to that day. And, uh, and then once again, you know, I do the ions since I, you know, found out about it because with glyphosate being in 75% of our air, soil, and water, it breaks down your gut lining and um, then you, you're not able to absorb nutrients and you're not, not able to block toxins. So that's how I start and then I go and all this, everything just is gonna be working better and absorbing better. I hope this has given you some ideas of, of uh, starting your day in a, in a healthy way that supports you. Uh, I thank you so much for subscribing to the channel and asking questions. Thank you and I appreciate it.